Guys, several very smart PhD scientists at our show sponsor, Zbiotics, developed a pre-alcohol probiotic drink. That's right, you take it before consuming alcohol. Zbiotics understands the real problem is not dehydration. It's the toxic byproduct of alcohol that makes you feel bad the next morning. Zbiotics is genetically engineered to break down this alcohol byproduct. I've shared these with several friends and family members who drink, and all I have heard is rave reviews. This is real science that works. No random plant extracts. No off-the-shelf ingredients. Just drink one Zbiotic before you start drinking. It works throughout the night, helping you to feel better when you wake up. Halloween is right around the corner, and Zbiotics comes in packs of 3, 6, and 12. So order now to get it in plenty of time. You can save 15% off today. Just go to zbiotics.com slash chael, or just click the link in the description below. Be sure to use the code chael at checkout to take advantage of this special offer. I got a friend. Now, just a wonderful friend. I mean, I can't, I can't even tell you how close. And a female friend, like, you know, you talk about my, you know, my best friends, or these are my best friends. But then it's different. You got to put them in a category like, well, my best friend in fighting or my best friend at the office is. And I would never disrespect my best friend by calling somebody else my best friend. But as far as girls went, this was as close. I mean, just wonderful relationship my entire life. I'm going to leave the name out. So a period of time goes by and my friend moves away. Now, I don't know that they moved. I've got to find that out later. And then I'm in shock. Oh my gosh, you've moved. Wow, let's get caught up. What brought you to this? Now, fast forward the tape a little bit more. My friend gets married. Now, I wasn't invited. It was obviously they didn't have my address or I was hard to find, something like this. I probably was mailed a beautiful invitation. It got lost in the mail. They ended up getting married and I, I didn't know about it. So fast forward the tape again. My friend's in town. Now, they didn't have time to get a hold of me. Probably pulled in a few directions and doing family things. It was over the holidays, but they're in town and I find out. So I get up on Christmas morning and I go to Starbucks and I get the whole family, my friend and her husband and, and, and the mother, I get, the brother's over there. I get the whole family. I get them drinks and I bring it to the door. Now, when I knock on the door, I apparently didn't knock hard enough because like they didn't come and let me in or, or say hi, but put the coffee there so that then they could have that when they, when they woke up. And I text my friend. I stay in really good contact. And somewhere along the way of this story, I meet my wife. Now, I've been with my wife for married for 11 years, and I believe together for 13. But over the course of my relationship with my wife, I share my very strong friendship. And my wife listens. And my wife listens. And years go by. And then the, the, the coffee incident and the holiday and the knocking at the door, like all of these things happen. My wife finally says, Chael, bring your text messages up. They're all time stamped and what. So I bring up my text messages. And when I send a message, it comes in blue. And if you have an iPhone, you, you guys will understand the blue, green, the difference in it. So it's blue. And, and then you scroll down to the next text and, and it's also blue. It was me again. But if you scroll down to the next, well, that one was blue. And the one after that, the one after that, the one after that, my wife simply said, you guys are not friends. They didn't forget to tell you that they moved, Chael. And your wedding invitation wasn't lost in the mail. And they weren't sleeping in on Christmas morning with kids in the house. You guys aren't friends. They've done nothing wrong. You're not friends. Oh, my goodness. I mean, it's right there in front of me. <laughs> right? It's so, it's right there in front. You guys know how time goes by? Like, it feels like a couple of days, but it's been eight years. You know how that happens? So this was maybe a little bit of a case of that. It had been more like 13 years, but it felt like, boy, we were just walking the halls of, uh, walking to science class together back at Westland High School. That's how it felt. But I was the last to know. I had to be told. And if I didn't have the documented proof, I think I would have denied it. Francis Ngano has made a statement. And Francis has said there's no new contract that's been sent over, and he's in no hurry. Francis has one skill. He's a really big man, and he can hit people and knock them down. There, there's nothing else to put on a resume. He worked very hard for that skill, dedicated his life, but there's nothing else to put on a resume. 
He is claiming to be 35 years old. Now, I'll see that as long as we word it. He's at least 35 years old. I'll go with that. He's coming off of an injury in the most coveted division in combat history that nobody's watching. You guys are diehard fans, and so am I. You ask me any way, tell, name 10 145-pounders, I'll do it right now. Name 10 25-pounders, I'll do it right If I ask you to name 10 heavyweights that are in contract, you're going to pause, and you might come up with them. But you will come up with the 10 guys in any other random weight, middleweight, go. Faster than you do heavyweight, there's never been a time in history that's like that. Now, the organization that you're attempting to get in a push and pull, and hey, sometimes you got to test those things, right? Sometimes you get a theory, and you've got to test it, but it's been tested. It's been tested for just shy of a year. And the organization is moving along with Housh. Now, it's very tough to realize they don't need me. The fans are not taking to the streets with the pitchforks and the lanterns that I thought they were going to. Business is fine without me. The most anticipated return to the sport is a potential future opponent of mine, not mine. These things are hard. But boy, if you can get there, right? I mean, those things really are tough that I just, right? And they, they, they weren't overly nice. But I feel coming from me, a guy, I worked my whole life to look like Francis Ngannou. I worked my whole life to have the success of Francis Ngannou. I feel for me, but I got to look up to this guy. So I feel that I am in a position. I feel I can be a little bit critical. And while you think maybe that doesn't feel good to find out that you're not needed, possibly not even wanted, I mean, to feel, ooh, that's tough stuff, right? When you find out I'm at least 35, I'm coming off an injury and people aren't clamoring for my return. When you find out I'm in a division that has been coveted from the beginning of time, whether it was Jack Johnson who passed it to Muhammad Ali, who passed it to Mike Tyson, Hulk Hogan came somewhere in the way, the heavyweight class, and that's the one that people are focusing on the least right now. I mean, it didn't feel good when my friend moved away and didn't tell me. It didn't feel good when those text messages didn't get responded to. It didn't feel good when I'm at the door and they don't let me in. But it was still a reality, so now I can stop, right? Now I can stop. I did 13 years of looking like a fool. Now I can stop. I don't have to look like a fool anymore. And I will tell you, that was a better feeling. Francis has not misplayed anything. Let's not do that to him. Francis did not negotiate himself out of anything. Don't do that to him, guys. Tell the story accurately. Francis took a shot. He had a theory and he tested it. Francis was also polite. I mean, not for nothing. That's a very scary man. He never raised his voice. He never used profanity. He really didn't. And when I say he never played against himself, see, I can't come down on his managers here. I can't come down on his trainers or his inner circle. Not at all. He was hurt. This was not a negotiation that kept Francis out of the ring. He has an injury. He's dealing with the injury. He did these simultaneously. So we as an audience, we're ready. It's not to forgive Francis. We never got upset with him. But somebody's going to have to sit to him and explain this to him. My wife had documented proof that I was talking to myself for 13 years. She had documented proof that I wasn't friends with somebody I thought I was really good friends with. Francis now has the evidence that he needs. It's all around him. The most talked about heavyweight fight right now, and we understand that Francis is almost back to healthy. We're still not talking about that. We're talking about Stipe versus Jones. We did this publicly. There's data. There's a focus group. There's a jury of your peers, but the decision's in. The decision's in. I didn't love grabbing that phone and opening that up and seeing that. I didn't love that. But somebody forced me to, and the reality was very helpful. But the reality is also here 
on Francis, the demands, the boxing of Tyson Fury, and the holding out with the organization. The evidence is here. What do you want to do with it? 